After probably a year, I've finally gotten a copy of something I've coveted for some time. It's the sequel to Quick and Easy CAD. Quick and Easy CAD 3D. This is a lovely piece of software from Expert. Um, this is, uh, it has to be horrible. It actually includes Home Design 3 free full version software. So uh, this is two different awful utility programs that I'll get to review at once. I found this at the Goodwill the other day on a really bad Goodwill trip where I hadn't gotten anything of value. But then at the last moment, here was this. So let's check it out. I should note as it's starting up, although I'm quite positive this is Quick and Easy CAD 3D, it just says CAD 3D. So it's possible that eh, maybe this isn't the quick and easy one. Maybe this is some sort of uh, advanced CAD from the same company. Oh, this is much later than the other software I've run from Expert though. This is from 2001. So maybe they got a little bit better in the meantime? That took me by surprise, but then that's the loudest sound in human existence. You can see there's been some changes since the last time I had a video up. Uh, I've replaced this machine with a Windows 98 system. I don't think I had it in the last video I put up. Um, I've remade my workbench and so on. And I also installed a Bionicles game, which is why I have this terrible desktop wallpaper. However, I also found on an awful disk full of the worst share I've ever seen, this rippling desktop effect, which I absolutely refuse to get rid of. I love it too much. I want this on all computers. All right, so... Wow, this actually needs DirectX. Wacky. Activision... Vi oh, they got acquired. They became an Activision brand. Not only that, but if we look here, it's Activision Value Publishing, Inc. So Activision had a whole separate division just for garbage software? I'm a little worried because this is enough newer and, you know, it's, I'm, it might be good. What if it's good? What will we do? I'm now having this uncomfortable feeling like maybe I really already found Quick and Easy CAD 3D and reviewed it, and so this is redundant, but if that happened, don't tell me. Okay, there we go, we're done. And it doesn't offer an option to run it, and it's not on the desktop, so we'll just have to go chase it down. Uh, uh, hmm. Well, there's nothing here. What did it install? I wonder if it just put everything in program files anyway. It absolutely did, everybody. Don't worry. Expert software has not gotten any better. There's nothing to fear. Okay, well, let's start it and see if it just destroys my computer. All right. All right. Well, boy, we're off to a great start. Why the hell did that happen? What, what did it get wrong here? I don't get it. All right, well, whatever. Okay, here's the program. Let's just see if we can navigate it. So we got 2D views. Yep. Okay. We have a camera angle tool, which means there must be another option for going back to 3D mode. There we go. 3D perspective. There we go. Now that's, hmm, that's interesting. Uh, I've never seen the grids presented as three separate planes. I'm not sure what you would do with that. Uh, anyway, so it looks like we have options for navigation in real time here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, um, just, just a note. I'm upset at the mouse cursor, which if you notice, looks away from the direction that you're moving and blinks in between when you change direction. That's that's really unsettling, but okay. All right, we also have a walking mode. Now you'd think the walking mode would be continuous, but no, you've got to, eh, 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 okay, all right, all right, all right. And then here's the flying mode. Oh, okay, so by flying, they mean just kind of working like everything else does. Though for what it's worth, I can't find a way to pan um, maybe, there we go, okay, so, oh, oh, now, now, so let me tell you what's going on here, I've never seen anything like this before, this is a very strange choice, so, 
when you use the helichopper to fly around, okay, it's doing a 3D projection, that's fine. But when you use the hand tool, notice that when I start scrolling, it becomes distorted, okay? And then eventually it just goes away entirely. So when a program renders an image in 3D, what it's doing is it takes all the points in the scene, all the polygons in this case, and it renders them into a two-dimensional image using a particular kind of perspective transform. That's math that distorts the image in such a way that it appears 3D despite being on a two-dimensional object. When you rotate the screen or when you move the camera, it has to recalculate all of those points and figure out what their new perspective transform should be. In other words, every single time that you move the camera in any way, it has to redraw everything, and it takes just as much effort as it did the first time. Now, you can see that when we drag the helicopter around, it can do that, it can keep up just fine. But for some reason, what they've done is they've chosen to render that projection larger than the available display. And then, when you use the hand tool, you're panning around a single pre-rendered image. And I can't figure out why they would have done this. And the other stranger thing is that that might not be what they're doing at all. You see, when I drag this, you notice how the grids and the markers down here disappear. So that suggests that they are redrawing everything. So they're spending all the effort to make a new 3D image, but for some reason they're panning the viewport within the rendered image. I can't fathom any reason anyone would have wanted that. All right, let's see what zooming is like. Now, see, zooming is performing a correct perspective transform. So if it wasn't, then you know we'd see this horribly distorted fisheye-looking view, but we don't. This is doing what it's supposed to do. So that makes sense. And then, and those are the only manipulation tools we have, so I don't really know what that's about. If we rotate over here and drag up that way, can we pivot? Or, oh, whoa. Uh, oh, no, why would you do that? It's pivoting off axis because I moved it. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, that's that's a very poor choice. You know, it's it's been months since I reviewed an expert software application, and it's actually reassuring. It's it's a breath of fresh air to find out that it's just as bad as it always was. It's like coming home to a familiar fireplace. I just, I sink down into my awful lumpy recliner. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, this is the back pain I remember. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's make some objects. So I consider the approachability of a CAD package to be very important. This is a conversation I've had with a lot of people a lot lately. So let's just jump right into it with no training. Let's not look at the manual. Let's see if we make some objects. So from the toolbar here, it looks like we have an option to switch between two-dimensional and three-dimensional objects. That's fine. So we can start with a square. Now, is it going to draw it in the plane? Uh, it doesn't seem to be drawing it, so I guess I have to let go first. No? Oh. Oh. Okay. Um, so it seems that it can't go any further left. What? Why is it limiting me there? Well, okay, I'll draw the object. Let's make a new one. What? Oh, okay, I think I see what's going on. It's it's kind of hard to see from the perspective, but here's what I think has happened. For some reason, uh, when I select a point to draw from, it chose the invisible plane demarcated by this x-axis here and said, no, you can't go any, you can't go any, any past that. For this one, it chose this axis as the delimiter. Again, I don't know why. So. I'll have to check and see if there's a setting for that. Maybe I can turn that off. Ah, there's a option to choose which grid you'll work in. So that's interesting. If we switch to the base grid, okay, it's made this active. Okay, now if I click and draw here, oh, okay. All right, I made an object. I can resize it. I noticed there was an extrude feature here. Let's see what that's like. Okay, all right, we have a box. Now let's see, can we render it in, there we go. Oh. Excellent. Um, now I notice there's a skew feature. Will that work on this, I wonder? Oh, it will. I wonder if I could choose which axis it operates in. That operates with that axis, okay. 
It seems to get a little freaked out sometimes. I'm not sure why it's doing that. I think that's when I cross the... Uh, I think it's when I cross this axis over here, it gets confused. And here's another question. Can I extrude one face? No, that doesn't seem to work. Okay. There's other CAD packages where you can actually extrude something that's a 3D object. You can extrude a face out of it. Um, and that is handy, but it looks like I can't do that here. Also, it appears that this is operating on a system where the axes act as hard stops for moving things. See, it just clunks right into the wall there. So that's interesting. These planes are actually hard physical walls. Uh, I've never seen anything like that before, but okay. I assume the same thing happens here. Yep, can't move it any further than the, the ground plane. That's, uh, that's an interesting decision. Oh, and you know what? Oh, it's happened. Yep, there we go. See, this has the same problem that um, uh, Quick and Easy CAD had, uh, which is that if you... Uh, hit Control Z, it actually just performs sort of a random operation that has nothing to do with uh, where the thing ever was. So again, that's a nice familiar old bug. Uh, all right, so we've got this. Um, so if I got my house, then I want to put a cap on it. So let's see. Uh, let's try and draw just a basic, uh, basic triangle. So to that end, I'm going to need to draw, I think, over... Uh, here, I'm going to want to draw on that axis, and let's put ourselves in 2D front view, okay? All right, and now I'm going to draw just a, a little Mr. Rogers roof here. I made these curves. Uh, can, I, can I join them together? All right, so I'm probably going to have to go hit the help, but first, let's go back to the 3D mode all right, I'm going to attempt to extrude these. Okay, well that did seem to work. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, okay. Um, all right, that's, it did do it. Um, I guess, oops. Oh, extruded them all separately. All right, and of course we do only have one, one layer of undo, which by 2001, is this really truly from 2001? Okay, so this is from 1996. Uh, it's probably the 3D home design that's from 2001. So this almost certainly is the Quick and Easy CAD 3D that was advertised in Quick and Easy CAD back when I reviewed that. So this would have come just a couple years later. So that's why it contains a lot of the same issues. It was probably made by a lot of the same people. In fact, uh, I'll have to check in post, but I yeah, I think these might be a lot of the same people. Sharon Thompson, Steve Davis, uh, these, these names feel similar. And I looked it up, and it is the same people, pretty much all the same people as on Quick and Easy CAD. With this the way it is, uh, I can't really group these together, so that's useless because I can't can't cap holes on this, um, which means I can't make it a, a, a solid 3D object. So I'm going to go to the help file, because at this point I think I'm sort of tapped out. Here we go. This is probably what I'm looking for. How do I keep several objects molded together? That's a weird way to say it. Use your group tool for molding details to create a single detailed object. Oh, okay. They're talking about like if you have extruded molding on like a cabinet or something, they're just saying this is how you get them to move around together. So that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for like a Boolean union or a ability to join points together. Oh gosh, I wish I had a printer hooked up so I could test this. When I print, my objects rotate and zoom in. The program is just letting you know your object information is printing and giving you something fun to look at in the meantime. <laughs> okay, so this is kind of useless. Uh, let's try the tutorial. So this says it's how to make a chair. All right, this says to drag a rectangle. Uh, let's make in an arm, it looks like. Oh, I see, there's a polygon tool. Okay, that makes sense. I just plumb missed it. There it is, okay. Now for what it's worth, the object is not a color I can actually see black on black, so what do I do here? Can I change the colors? Ugh, doesn't look that way. Also, 3D viewing navigation, continuous or controlled? Oh, I'm curious what that does. All right, well, I guess I can't change this color, so I'm just gonna have to remember where the points are, I suppose. So we'll go from, uh, you can't click and drag, you gotta click and then let go. Uh, do I hit enter? Do I right click? What the hell? Uh, uh, 
Do I hit escape? Ah. No. Okay, I can't. I can't do anything yet. This mode. Okay, we can go back to the help. Double click. Double click. Okay, I never would have figured that out. All right, let's try again. Double click. Are you serious? Okay. Okay. There we go. All right. So let's put this in the planar mode. Oh, whoops. Hmm. That's odd. The base grid is the working grid. Oh. And it won't. If I come out here and grab this. No, it's it's just plumb stuck where it is. Maybe it's the case that you can't actually take an object off the two-dimensional grid unless it's been extruded. That's a weird way to do it, but okay. Let's try that. Oh. Oh no, that didn't work. Oh no. Oh no, I can't undo that. Uh okay, so it ruined my object. I have to make it again. Eh, 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 eh. Alright, so extrude and actually, yeah, why didn't that work? Shouldn't it have made it on the base grid? I'm gonna copy this object, paste it. And now it's free. Is the other one free? No, this one's just kind of locked in place. This one can move. So now, let me copy that again. Can I extrude this? Nope, just does that. But if I pick this one, can I extrude that? No, that doesn't work either. Let me paste in another copy. Okay, let's put this on the that grid. And then try to extrude. Nope. What the fuck? And then that grid. Oh, did that finally do it? I think that did it. Let's go to shaded mode. Hey, there's our roof. Uh, it's not a good one, but there it is. Let's just kind of press on here. It's my impression that there's no Boolean operations in this. I don't think there's any Booleans at all. I'd be really shocked if there was. The math for that, I suspect, would completely outstrip the capabilities of the expert software developers. Uh, so, wow. Uh, oh my god, once again, it has ended up on the wrong side of the grid. Can I... You know, uh, how, how is this possible? Okay, it can't exit the left side. It can't exit the right side. It can't, can't exit anywhere. And it got drawn in the wrong place. So I'm gonna cut and then paste, still in the wrong place. Okay, so this program's unusable. There's no debating that at this point. The program does not work. Let's just move on. I'm gonna dick with it a little bit before I just get rid of it. So, what's up? The other thing is the multi-gon is well it's ostensibly multi-gon but six sides automatically. So maybe we can change that in the settings. Yes we can. That's a silly place for it, but okay. Let's set that to twelve. Can it do it? Yeah, it did it. What happens if we set that to a useless number? Can we set it to two? Yep, we can set it to two and it made, uh, yeah. What happens if we set it to one? Will it let us? Yep, it'll draw a impossible polygon. Cool. We have a bunch of prefabs here. So let's see what those are about. So we've got a fluorescent fixture up there. Here is an elbow brace. So this seems to be construction supplies. Which of course I keep spawning on the wrong side of the plane so I can't really get close enough to them. Living room chairs, hey. Yep, there's there's a chair. Now I don't think it didn't load any of the textures. Yeah, it didn't load any of the textures as it, as it was complaining. Which is funny because here's the textures right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna just take the whole program. I'm gonna put it in apps where it belongs. Okay, let's run it again. Does it find the textures this time? No. Okay, so in the executable strings, there's a reference to a CAD 3D.any file, but that's not physically in the folder. So you know where I bet it is? I bet it's in the Windows directory. Yep, there it is. And there it is. It tried to point the textures to the root of the C drive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, baby. All right, with that fixed, let's start the program again. Textures cannot be found. Yeah, baby. Oh, it didn't save. 
That's a little secret for you. Do you know that the save operation was not Control S in Notepad until like Windows NT? I keep forgetting this. I keep forgetting this. Once again. All right, no error. Yep, there we are. Our chair has its textures. Let's uh, orbit around. God, none of these modes make any sense. I'm in the walking mode, but I can't. I can't change my perspective. I can't. I can't rotate, right? So, like, yeah, I can walk around, okay, but how am I supposed to actually change the direction I'm looking? And what good is it if you can't? Okay, let's do this. Let's open one of their samples. So it came with samples, and I want to see what I'm supposed to be impressed by here. Okay, that's a roll top desk. Oh, lordy. Okay, let's bring it up. Again, I tried to do the walkthrough because there's a great perspective for it, and uh, it just slammed me down on the ground. So now I can't actually do what I want to do. All right, so we'll do this mode. How do these work? Is this, uh, am I even moving? Yeah, let's uh, ungroup. When I move stuff, like, nothing happens. Is it like trying and running out of memory or something? What the fuck? I mean, let's be clear, that's completely possible. Can I just straight up, I can't even delete it. What's going on? What the fuck? Select everything, delete everything. Yeah, it cannot delete these objects. I don't know why. Okay, all right, well, let's uh, check out the other samples. Here is a sculptor. Yeah, it really is, it's sculptor, not sculpture. And, uh, okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's beautiful. I hope you do more of them, Robbie. It would be nice, you know, if I could see it, but because I can't, I can't slide side to side. Let's check out the final example. Holy shit. Well, that was zoomed in a lot. Cool, Dark Souls. You know, I think it's running out of texture memory because look, the whole back side is not textured. I have the feeling this program is running out of memory, period. And that's why a lot of stuff isn't working. Like it's, it doesn't have the, it doesn't have the working space to do the, the intermediate work for the delete operation and whatnot. I think that's what's going on. Well, this one works okay. Yeah, so what the fuck? All right, done with this piece of shit. All right, and then just for what it's worth, I'm curious about this Home Design 3D. Uh, I think this is probably gonna be a much better piece of software. And if it is, I'm just gonna bail because I'm not really here for that. I was here for the expert software thing. So let's see what we got.